Welcome to Jank Brews, where we brew standard decks and play them in ranked battles on the arena. If you like that sort of thing, like and subscribe, you know. Today we've got a, a fairly janky brew. There's plenty of good cards in here, but um, we wanted to play with Narsa and Lightened Exile. And we tried previously to make it viable in our Boros equipment deck and just didn't get there. So we've got a, a spicy approach to it here that's uh, probably similar to decks you've seen in eras of standard magic past. We'll get into it, uh, starting with Knights, Narset, Enlightened Exile. <clears throat> uh, three, four, 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 just sky colors. It says creatures you control have prowess. Whenever Narset and Lighted in Exile attacks, exile target non-creature, non-land card with mana value less than Narset's power from a graveyard and copy it, you may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. This is especially interesting because it doesn't have to be instant or sorcery, it can be any non-creature, non-land card. Um, again, that's why I was trying to brew it up with some swords and such in Boros, or a, a version of uh, Bor Boros with Jeskai colors. But we're going more the traditional route here where um, we're going to be copying instants and sorceries for the most part and making use of that that prowess. So the Wandering Emperor can also be hit, uh, noting off of Narset, particularly if Narset's power is plus one. And we'll take a quick glance here at Reckless Stormseeker, uh, one of the other creatures we're playing a full four copies. Uh, that, I don't know if it quite belongs, but I really just wanted to to uh, be able to bash with a 4-4 Narset, potentially triggering a Wandering Emperor off of Narset's ability. So Restless Storm Seeker is also just a good magic card. So it uh, helps us get there occasionally. We're going to bounce over here and take a glance at our fun ups. We almost always play some fun ups here on Jank Brew. And we've got a copy of Brawl and Kari Zev. Uh, first Strike Menace 2-4 for 3. And whenever we cast our first instant or sorcery spell each turn... Oh, sorry about that. Uh, you may cast a spell with lesser mana value that shares a card type it with it from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, create First Mate Ragavan, a legendary 2-1 red monkey pirate creature token. It gains haste until end of turn. This card has been good in my testing. Uh, it's not the greatest with our one fun of copy of Angel Fire Ignition because I think this is our only sorcery. <laughs> so you can't trigger anything else off of Angel Fire Ignition. But again, uh, really, you know, it, it, this is a great card to have against the red and Boros decks that we're going to see a lot of. Giving a, a creature vigilance so it can still be a blocker for the turn. Trample, lifelink, indestructible, and haste. All pretty great against those those styles of decks. So we've got a fun of copy of Angel Fire uh, Ignition. Plays well with Prowess and such, obviously. And we can get it out of the yard with Narset if it's there, too. So uh, we'll bop over to Monastery Mentor, um, great magic card from Eras of Magic Past, and it's in standard right now. It's not the greatest in this deck because we don't have a lot of ways to like trigger it off a bunch of times, so I don't want the full four copies. We're only playing, I think, 15 total creatures here. You could argue to play more Monastery Mentors and, and fewer, perhaps even Malcolm, which we'll get to in a second, but uh, this is Jank Bruise, and sometimes we do things a little jankily around here. So we'll round out the creature exploration with Malcolm. This card has been fun for me in other builds, and it has some potential place in a tempo deck where it's got flash. We can hold up our soul partitions, our lightning strikes, our lightning helixes, and flash Malcolm in at the end of a turn. This is probably the first card I would consider cutting from this deck. Certainly if you're looking for creatures, there's probably a bunch you could consider. Uh, but I wanted another creature at two, and the fact that this had flash and flying and the little, uh, you know, uh, loot ability makes it interesting. So we've got two copies of Malcolm. We have the full four copies of Bloodthirsty Adversary. This card is uh, a good fit because you can play it on two with haste, uh, get some bashes in against more controlling decks. Uh, or, of course, you can play it on five and recast any number of our instants and sorceries, uh, which potentially could even trigger Narset if Narset's in play. Uh... On the instance and sorcery front, we've got full four copies of Lightning Helix. We've got full four copies of Lightning Strike. We've got full four copies of Soul Partition. You may have heard me talk about this card before and that I think it's a trap for control players where you're essentially two for one yourself if the game goes long. But because this deck intends to win quickly uh, with Burn and with Creature Bashing, I think Soul Partition is best suited for a deck like this and has so far been quite good. 
Beyond that, we've got a trio of cards at one. We've got two considers. We've got two fading hopes. We've got two play with fires. Just cheap spells to cast uh, to tr trigger uh, prowess or to um, give our bloodthirsty adversaries or narsets easy things to target. Plenty of options to consider there. Our mana base is relatively simple. We are playing 24 lands. We've got 14 sources of each color. I haven't done the math to determine if that's exactly right, but it's pretty close to what I, I want. And we care more about fast lands than we do in some of the other decks. If you've watched uh, the Titania deck tech, for example, we don't care as much about what we're doing on turns one, two, and three. Uh, but here we do, and it's kind of balanced between the colors. So we've got uh, all four copies of each of the available slower lands um, because turns three and beyond, we'd really love to hit our colors. And often we don't care so much about hitting our colors on turn one. So we've got two copies of each, uh, Shivan Reef and Battlefield Forge. We don't want to paint ourselves too much against the current meta, but I think those cards are worthwhile. You'll notice that we're not including uh, Scry, not Scry, Surveil Lands, and at present, I'm not even including any Restless lands, the creature lands, because we care more about getting our action uh, from the cards in our deck. We don't intend to too often be playing from behind. And if we, I, I think a reasonable sideboard consideration, if you wanted a best of three version of this deck, would be to include Restless lands. And maybe you include, include a couple of Restless lands uh, in your not as janky version, who knows? But for, for right now, we're going straight for the dome and not worrying about lands that enter the battlefield tapped too often. Without further ado, let's get into some action. <laughs> 